from the University of Sydney, the Center of Translational Data Science, they have found that the U.S. COVID-19 deaths poorly predicted by the HME model. That's the model that everyone's been going on so far. This was used to predict the ventilator use, hospital bed requirements, and other resourcing for U.S. states. That's what all the freaking out was about last week. There's not enough beds. There's not enough ventilators. Ah, there's not enough resources. Where are all the masks at? Ah, everyone's losing their mind. Trump's like, that's okay. We've got all the masks. We sent you lots of masks. They're frankly asking for too many masks, but we got them anyways. Too many ventilators. You don't need that many ventilators, but we, we have them anyways. This is only real cloud. I'm trying to make daily videos, uh, but it's difficult. It's difficult. I'm making frequent videos. Let's see, what are we talking about today? Oh, of course, we're still talking about the coronavirus. Oh, man. I'll take a break. It's getting sick and tired of this. I'm really, I'm, I'm tired of the coronavirus. You know what? You know what? I, on my calendar, I have written in for tomorrow. End corona. And, you know, I'm just declaring it. It's over tomorrow. It's over. We're going we're gonna to finish it. And that doesn't mean that we're going to end the lockdown necessarily tomorrow, but the conversation is shifting, and I think that's what's important. Uh, you know, last week the news was all about the lockdown and how effective is the lockdown? What kind of treatments do we have? Are the drugs work? Is the Trump cure fake or not? Is it is it real? Do we have enough ventilators, enough ICU beds? What about this and that? The doctors are going to get sick. Oh no. And how can we all go to the store and still get food? And that's okay. And what about the stimulus package? Well, that all is now being replaced by, hey, when do we end this lockdown and go back to work? We've had enough of this. Can we end this, like, now? Or, like, in two weeks, maybe? May 1st? How about we go for that? And, actually, some people are, are doing partial openings. And uh, in, in certain areas, not in New York. New York's a hot spot now because it's uh, so dense there. Uh, but other jurisdictions, um, I, I think... Uh, we are beginning to understand that this has been maybe not an overreaction, given what we knew at the time, but now it's an overreaction, given what we know now. But there's so much popular support for this lockdown and social isolation that it's difficult now for the politicians to walk it back. And everyone will scream at them saying, no, you're going to cost lives if you walk it back. We have to keep locked down. What about the economy? They say, no, who cares? Nobody cares about the economy. Of course, the economy is what everybody cares about other than their loved ones. It's the food that they eat, it's the clothing they wear, etc. That's what the economy actually is. Of course, the National Review was on the job last week. They were reporting it, though the, the conversation, at least as I was aware of it, wasn't really about this. But here's a story from April 9th from the National Review. COVID-19 projection models are proving to be unreliable. That's right. In the space of just six days starting April 2nd, two revisions on April 5th and the 8th have utterly discredited the model produced by the U University of Washington Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. I wrote about the IHME's modeling uh, the day after the first revision, which was dramatic, but pales in comparison. This was not immediately apparent because the latest revision on April 8th did not include a side-by-side -side comparison as did, the, as did the April 5th revision. Perusal of the new data, however, is staggering, as it is what says about the government's predictions we are hearing just days ago about the likelihood of 100,000 deaths, with just as many as 240,000 as a real possibility. And they've downgraded that a lot, down to under 80,000 now. Um, and I was hearing something else about another study that came out, uh, saying that these models uh, missed the mark. I did a little digging and I found the... Uh, I found the article, the, the study that came out saying that the models were bad. I heard this on Ben Shapiro's show from the Daily Wire there. This is from the University of Sydney, the Center of Translational Data Science. They have found that the U.S. COVID-19 deaths poorly predicted by the HME model. That's the model that everyone's been going on so far. But right now, they released a paper. You can read it here. I, I'm not going to go into depth here, but you can read it. I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. Also subscribe, you know, while you're there. This was used to predict the ventilator use, hospital bed requirements, and other resourcing for U.S. states. That's what all the freaking out was about last week. There's not enough beds. There's not enough ventilators. Ah, there's not enough resources. Where are all the masks at? Ah, everyone's losing their mind. Trump's like, that's okay. We've got all the masks. We sent you lots of masks. They're frankly asking for too many masks, but we got them anyways. Too many ventilators. You don't need that many ventilators, but we, we have them anyways. 
now that's not what the talk is, apparently. I, this should be big news. What are the key findings? Over 70% of the U.S. states had death rates that were inconsistent with the predictions from the other model. The ability of the HME model, IHME model, to make accurate predictions decreases with increasing amount of data, so it's getting worse and worse. The more data they gather, the less that the predictions are able to do anything useful. Improved predictive modeling needed for adequate provision of ventilators, PPE, medical staff at a local level. So we need better predictive modeling. And we need to revisit this data as we have new data. We're like, ah, we weren't able to predict this correctly. And maybe because we weren't able to predict this correctly, maybe we overpredicted and we overreacted, which I'm not saying is bad. I'm not saying that's a bad thing we overreacted. We probably saved countless lives, or probably we can actually count them. Thousands and thousands of lives were saved by the overreaction, probably. But now we can also see, hey, it was an overreaction, so let's step it back a little bit. Not completely, not back to normal like this thing doesn't exist, but let's step it back and reopen our economy so that we don't also have a global depression to deal with, uh, because that would also be really bad. That's what I'm thinking. That's, remember back, if you watched any of my previous videos, I was always talking about the calculating the death cal the death, the mortality rate of this thing. How bad is it really? They were saying it was 1%, then they were saying it was 2%, and I was saying it could be up to 10%, to 15 even. Um, and in some places it has been higher than 10%. In Italy, some places that are really hit really bad. Uh, but for the most part, if you, if you take these rough calculations, uh, it's actually about um, of the total deaths versus the total confirmed, it's actually like 6% right now, just under 6%. And that is a huge amount. And if it were actually 6% mortality, then these lockdowns, I would think, are totally justified. That makes a lot of sense. But actually, it probably isn't. The, the models have been wildly incorrect, as it turns out. Um, and they think that the actual amount of people who have got it is probably an order of magnitude greater than what what, they, what the total confirmed numbers are. So right now the total confirmed numbers are just under 2 million. So if it's an order of magnitude greater than that, it's probably, the reality is, 20 million people already have this. Maybe even more than that. But 20% of, uh, 20 million people worldwide probably already have the coronavirus and the vast majority of them are asymptomatic. Now if you take that with the actual deaths, and you know, there's been some talk about the death numbers being inflated because they're counting everybody who dies who is even presumed to have the coronavirus as a corona death, even if they didn't necessarily get tested. Uh, in, in Spain, apparently, somebody died in a car, car accident, or got in a car accident, went to the hospital, got tested positive for corona, but died because of the car crash injuries, but got listed as a corona death. I, I think that's a pretty edge case outlier there, but certainly if somebody dies of the flu or they die of a heart attack or something else, and they have coronavirus or they're presumed to have it, then that means they're corona deaths, so the numbers get counted. But even if we take the total numbers here of deaths, we can see that there's 125,000, almost 126,000, all of them, of course, tragic deaths. I uh, wish that we could have avoided this, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, if we take the total deaths there with the actual number, the presumed number, an order of magnitude, greater than the total confirmed number, so we have 20 million people, that's more like 0.6%, which is only six times worse than the flu, roughly speaking. So I think that maybe we do need a, a, a larger response. It's not just the flu, it's not just the flu, bro. Certainly that's still an underreaction, but I think the reaction we're taking is more like if it were a 6% mortality, which is, a, which is a massive, serious problem, and we really should have a, a massive shut down the whole world and destroy the economy to respond to this virus. That seems appropriate. But it seems to me that the real death rate is actually under 1%, probably 0.6% or half a percent. That would be the real mortality. So certainly more serious than the flu, uh, but I think our reaction is way oversized at this point, knowing what we know now. And I think, unfortunately, the politicians might be slow to react to the data, even though they kept talking about how we got to look at this day to day and we got to keep looking at the data and keep making our decisions based on the data. Well, now we've got new data. The models are not correct. The models were unable to accurately predict what was going to happen. So we can't rely on those models for predictions because it's not going to happen that way. 
of course, we can't just open everything back up and go back to normal necessarily. We do need to say, take certain uh, we do need to take certain uh, precautions still. But I think maybe the world should be looking at going to a model something like the Sweden model at this point. Now that we have actually flattened the curve, and I can show you that here. If you look at the total confirmed numbers, doesn't look so good. Uh, flattening a little bit, but it's pretty much just keep on going, keep on going. But if you look at the daily cases, this is where the real story is. The daily cases are falling. Yes, day by day. Came down a little bit, jumped right back up, and now it is steadily falling day by day. And this is, I think, a day, uh, this is April 13th, so this is yesterday. So we're not sure what today's numbers are. Hopefully it'll be even lower than that. And in a week, it'll be right down here at 20,000 new cases. And, in, and by the end of the month, it'll be right down at zero cases, and the end of corona is nigh. So more or less, my prediction is kind of almost, I said April 20th around, maybe I was about a week off, but I think by the end of this month, by May 1st, May days will be back outside these crazy authoritarian restrictions and people spying on their neighbors, communist style will end and we can get back to some semblance of normal life, even though we will probably still have to keep those vulnerable people amongst us uh, safe, have them self-isolate to a degree and still take precautions on their behalf and still probably maintain some level of social distancing. Maybe we shouldn't be opening up giant rave parties or uh, or, you know, uh, sports events with thousands and thousands of people crammed into a venue. Maybe it's a little soon for that, but certainly the regular operation of the economy must happen. We need to end this lockdown or we're going to be in a serious uh, economic crisis, which is actually going to be in some ways worse than this pandemic crisis. So I think we got to end this lockdown. We got to look at opening up our economy over the next two weeks and going back to life as normal and we can enjoy this lovely spring weather that we've been having. Please take a minute to subscribe if you like the content and leave a comment. I'll probably get back to you in the comments section here. Uh, hit that notification bell, hit the all, subscribe, share it, share it to your friends uh, and your family on Facebook or something. That'd be great. Help out the channel. Thanks a lot. See you next time.